Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at non-taxable exchange, specifically involuntary conversion. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, and that's you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional as well on a personal level. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly encourage you to do so. It's very good to network with other professionals and build your network. Facebook, you could like my Facebook page. Also connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So when I update a new lecture, you're aware of it. This is my Twitter account, and I do have a website where I house my lectures by course and a chapter. The chance that if you're watching this recording, you are either an accounting student or a CPA candidate or an eligible CPA or planning to sit for your CPA, I would like to remind you this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. So if you like this recording, on Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures, thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution, simulations, textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards. If you happen to visit, if you happen to use Jaeger, use the code PMF. So if you're a CPA student or just an accounting student, this is a great resource for you to supplement your studies. If you use PMF code, you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. Before we start uh, this uh, session, I just want to make sure you understand that this session assumes that you know how to determine a gain or a loss. If not, please go to chapter 13 and you know what a non-taxable exchange is. So you are familiar with that topic. You are familiar with the non-taxable exchange and how non-taxable exchange work. So let's talk about involuntary conversion. What's the idea of involuntary conversion? What's the overall picture? Well, guess what? When you have an asset, you can sell the asset. And we talked about selling. You can exchange it. But notice these are voluntary exchanges. Basically, you decided to sell the asset. You decided to exchange it. What happened if you have an involuntary event? What is an involuntary event? Well, let's assume you had a fire theft, okay, an earthquake, a condemnation by the government. Those are considered involuntary conversion. It means you, did, you, you, you really did not want to dispose of the asset, but due to uncontrollable circumstances, circumstances that are outside your control, therefore you had to go ahead and uh, get rid of the asset. An involuntary conversion cannot be a voluntary act by the taxpayer. So you cannot voluntarily say this is do something and say it's involuntarily. It has to be involuntary. You have no control. Section 1033 permits, it's not mandatory, so you, it's elective, non-taxable treatment of gain if the amount reinvested in the replacement property is greater or equal than the amount realized. Simply put is this. If you have an asset, it has a basis equal to 100000 that's your basis. Then something happened. There was a fire and the base, the, the property is basically gone. The insurance company reimbursed you 120000 Now, if the insurance company paid you this much, this amount is considered amount realized. And here's what you have now. You have 120000 amount realized minus $100,000 of the adjusted basis of the property. Technically, you have a gain from the asset disposition. You have a gain of 20000 Now, this section, 1033, permits the non-taxable treatment of gain if the amount reinvested in, in a replacement property is greater than or equal to the amount realized. So simply put, if you take this amount and you reinvest in a property. Now we're going to talk about the rules. You have a time limit. There are specific rules on what type of property you, you will need to reinvest in. But as long as you reinvest this amount, you don't have to pay. Not you don't have to pay. The gain will not be the, uh, the gain will not be taxable. Now it will be deferred. OK, so this is what we mean by Section 1033 involuntary conversion. It allows you 
to basically not pay gain on this involuntary, uh, involuntary conversion. Well, if the amount reinvested in the replacement property is less than the amount realized, so simply put, if this 120,000, you only invested 80,000 in the replacement property, then re gain recognized to the extent of the deficiency. So some gain will be realized. And the best way to illustrate this is to work an example. But this is the idea. Jason operates a charter fishing business in Port St. Louis, L Lucy, Florida taking customer out in Atlantic Ocean on day-long fishing trips. Unfortunately, his boat was completely destroyed when Hurricane Matthew hit the Florida coast. His boat has a basis of 120, which is the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. Fortunately, Jason had a marine insurance, which included a replacement cost rider. His, he filed an insurance claim after his boat, his boat was destroyed and he received 175,000. So you have 175,000 of amount realized, the adjusted basis of the boat is 78,000. Now, Jason would realize a gain of 75,000. Now, uh, 97,000. Now, what can James do? Um, not James, Jason. Jason can defer the entire gain provided he uses all the insurance proceeds to purchase a new boat. So if he takes this money and he purchases a new boat, for his business to kind of keep on going, then the gain is deferred. Let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's assume Jason buys a new boat for 180,000. He uses his entire insurance settlement as part of the purchase. He did not only buy it for 175, he even paid 5,000 more. In this case, Jason 97 realized 97,000 realized gain is deferred and the basis of the new boat must reflect that deferral as a result well, the, how do we compute the basis? The, the basis is, is the fair market value of the new asset, which is 180 minus the deferred gain. So 180 minus 97 is 83,000, okay? Let's assume, on the other hand, Jason is able to negotiate an excellent price for the new boat. In fact, he's able to replace his old boat for 168. So remember, he received from the insurance company 100 and, uh, 100 and 75,000. He received from the insurance company 175,000, but he only used 168, so he was able to replace the boat for 178. And he uses the 7,000 remaining from the insurance settlement to pay other expenses. Now, what happened in this case? Well, in this case, Jason must recognize a gain of 7,000, and that's the difference between what he receives and the amount that he did not reinvest in the property he used for something else, okay? The balance of the realized gain is deferred and the basis of the new boat. So basically what we say, the deferred gain is only 90,000, so we'll take the fair value of the property received to find the basis, minus the deferred gain, the deferred gain is only 90,000. Because remember, the total gain is 97, the total gain is 97,000. We recognize seven, Therefore, the deferred is 90,000. Therefore, the basis is the fair value, fair market value of the property received minus the deferred gain, which will give us a basis of 78,000. 78, okay. Now, and if the un involuntary conversion result in a loss, okay, if let's assume what happened is they gave you, the insurance company paid you, but it's less than the basis, and the loss, section 1033 does not change the normal loss recognition rule. In other words, if a realized loss would be otherwise, we would, re we would recognize the realized loss. It doesn't change the results, okay? And let's work an example just to make sure we know this. Oh, obviously, it should be very obvious that you can recognize the loss. Assume that Jason has only partial coverage on his boat and his insurance company only paid 50,000. So amount realized is 50, adjusted basis is 78. We have a realized loss of 28,000. Well, there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no rule for the realized loss. In this case, section 1033 will not apply and Jason realized loss will be recognized, which is the full 28,000 will be recognized as realized loss. Now let's talk a little bit more about the 1033 requirement. So we talked about, you know, in general, as long as you replace the property, now we need to talk how long do you have to replace this property and what type of property you have to replace. So there are specific requirements. So replacement property must be similar or related in service or use 
as involuntary converted property and you must reacquire it you must acquire a new property within a specified time period so the first thing we're going to look at is the replacement property so how do we define what is a replaced property now the replacement property must be similar or related in service or use as the converted property it has to be similar now the definition for section 1033 is more stringent than the like-kind exchange in a sense that the definition is interpreted very narrowly and differently for if you were an owner investor or if you are an owner user so it, it's a di it's a difference so if you are an owner investor basically owner investor is you have rental property and your rental renting your property as a lessor owner user is basically you have a machine in your a machine in your manufacturing facilities, then you're an owner user. You're using that machine to produce the property. So depending where you stand, depending on what's your relationship to that property, or there's a special rules for condemnation. Let's take a look at the, at, at the rules real quick. If you are owner investor, it means you have the property and basically you rented the property. The property must be used by the owner in a similar endeavor. So basically, the, the property that you receive, you must use it in a similar endeavor. Let's give you an example. You have a rental apartment building, okay, and it was destroyed. So the rental apartment building can be replaced with a rental office building because both have the same use to the owner. It's the production of rental income. So as long as you take this money, although you, it was rental apartment building now you make it rental office building it's this it has the same use as far as section 1033 why because you are owner investor you are you are not running the business you are leasing basically the business okay now you cannot take this money and invest it in a personal residency because that's that's different than the owner investor relationship that you had before if you are owner user simply put if the property that you are using that you are replacing as part of your business part of your manufacturing facilities now the rules are a little bit more restrictive here the property must have the same use so if you lost if you lost a property that was producing headphones you cannot replace it with a property that's producing uh, microwaves okay it's not the same use okay a manufacturing plant is, is not a replacement property for a wholesale grocery warehouse so if you were if you had a manufacturing plant and you lost it you cannot take the money and start a wholesale grocery warehouse because each have a different function to the owner user basically you cannot go into a new business okay and obviously you can I'm, I'm sure you would you would see why the government would not allow you to do so <laughs> and basically people would maybe will have accidents at their proper at their manufacturing plant if they're not doing good take this money and change business well, the government is not going to allow you to do so at least you can do so but that's going to give you a tax-free tax-free gain on the transaction okay and there are special rules for condemnation condemnation means when the government forces uh, forces you to give up the property this is more flexible uh, more flexible and selected a replacement property for example if you have improved real property it can be replaced with unimproved real property there is more flexibility when the government takes your property because you really had no control over this this therefore they would allow you to replace it with some other property whichever property you think will fit your need okay time replacement how long do you have to replace the property that's also important taxpayer normally has two year period after the close of the taxable year in which a gain is realized to replace the property and we'll work an example to illustrate this now replacement time start when the involuntary conversion or the threat of condemnation occurs replacement time ends two years you have three years for condemnation of realty after the close of the taxable year in which the gain is realized so let's take a look at an example because you just have to be very careful on how they define the two-year year okay taxpayer office building is destroyed by fire November 4th 2015 so we are looking at the, the accident happened in 2015. When do you file your taxes? You, for 2015, you're gonna file your taxes, I'm sorry, in 2015, you're gonna file in 2016. And guess what? You have, you have two years after the end of the tax year in which you file. So simply put, you have until technically, not technically, you have until November 4th, 20, uh, 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 20, no, not November 4th, December 31st. You still have till December 
31st, 2018. So it's two years after the close of the taxable year. Okay, so so the taxpayer received insurance proceeds on February 10th. Taxpayer is a calendar year. It's a calendar year taxpayer. The taxpayer replacement period is from November 4th, 2015. Till December 31st, 2018. As long as you replace the property here, you can defer the gain. You can defer the gain. Also, we need to know if this is mandatory or an elective. Well, it could be mandatory, non-recognition of gain could be either mandatory or elective, depending on whether the conversion is direct or indirect. Now we kind of talk about direct and indirect conversion. What's direct conversion? Direct conversion is what we are talking about. You, you took the money, and you replace the property. What's indirect conversion? You took the money and you kept, okay? Well, we have different rules for direct versus indirect. We already looked at the direct conversion. Involuntary conversion rules are mandatory. Basically, you defer the gain. Basis and holding period in the replacement property is the same as the converted property. Again, gain realized to extend amount realized exceeds investment in replacement property. We already talked about this. This is for direct conversion. We talked about this. Indirect conversion, what happened when you keep that money? Well, guess what? You'd recognize gain to the extent the amount realized from the involuntary conversion exceed the cost of the qualifying replacement. Simply put, you have a realized gain. Whatever you received minus the adjusted basis exceeds the adjusted basis. Adjusted basis. Involuntary conversion rules do not apply to losses. Again, if you have a loss, involuntary, involuntary rules don't apply. In other words, you would recognize the loss. But remember, Personal use asset, personal use asset losses are not recognized or postponed because personal use, they are not, not recognized. Personal use assets are not recognized. Hopefully we know this. So if you have any personal use asset, whether it's involuntary or voluntary, it's not recognized. Now there are special rules um, you can deduct, but th those deductions are suspended casualty and theft losses from 2018 to 2025, CD itemized deduction. Let's take a look at the last example. Lupe's property with an adjusted basis of 20,000 is condemned by the state. Lupe receives a property with a fair market value of 50,000 as a compensation for the property taken. So they took his property and they replaced it with another property. Because the non-recognition of realized gain is mandatory for the direct conversion, Lupi's realized gain is not recognized because it's because it's a direct conversion. They gave him a property. Basically, it's a replacement. And the basis of the property is $20,000. let us assume they gave Lupe $50,000 cash. Then Lupe would deduct the... And they did not use the... They kept the cash. Okay? Then Lupe will have $30,000 gain that's realized and recognized. Assuming Lupe did not use the cash to, repl to replace his property. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying hard, if you're studying for your CPA exam, always, always, always study hard.